May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. It's always um, something I always um, love to remember on this first Sunday in Lent, that you know that this, this reading we have heard from um, Matthew's Gospel this year of the temptation of Jesus. Um, this is the reading, um, albeit from Mark's Gospel or Luke's Gospel in different years, which Christians throughout the world have been reading on this first Sunday in Lent for centuries and centuries and centuries. It's to get us started, so to speak, on our Lenten journey. But of course, every year we hear it, we hear something different in it. Um, in our lectionary, we use a three-year cycle, so there's different combinations of readings with it. Uh, and this year, we have that reading from Genesis, which Sarah read as our first lesson. And every time we read the Word of God, we see something different in it. It has been described as, you know, it's shallow enough for a child to play in but deep enough for an elephant to swim. We can read the scriptures and we can, yes, we can understand what they're saying, but every time we read them and as we read them more deeply, we see there's more and more and more and we will never get to the end of it. And it's listening to the word of God that I want us to think about today. As we think about in Lent making space for God, we all know the experience of dealing with people, and I know I can be guilty of this at times, where you can't get a word in edgeways with them. You don't make space to listen to them. And as we make space for God in our Christian lives, we need to make space for God to speak to us. And how does he speak to us? He speaks to us through his word. Of course, the reading um, from Matthew's Gospel describes what we call Jesus' temptations. The word temptation, we think of it as a very negative thing, um, but really it can just mean testing. And that's what's going on here. Jesus is being tested. At the start of his ministry, who is he going to listen to? He's tested and yet he doesn't sin. And yet it is something we live out in every single moment of our lives, a similar temptation. Who are we going to listen to? Because, you know, you can read lots of books. You can listen to lots of different people. You can listen to the radio. You can, listen to the, you can read the newspaper. You can listen to whatever is on television. And they're all saying different things. Some of them good and some of them not so good. We can even find that with people in our circle. You know what? There are people that maybe it's not so good to listen to. It's not going to do you good. Who is it that we listen to? Our reading from Genesis chapters 2 and 3, of course, has the original temptation, if we call it that. Eve is in the garden. Adam is nowhere to be seen. He's obviously um, neglecting whatever he's supposed to be doing. Uh, and the serpent comes to Eve and says, Did God say, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? It's all about listening to God's word. Adam and Eve had been given God's word. They were told what they were to do and what they were not to do. And yet another voice comes and whispers, did God really say that? And we know how it goes. What a contrast then when it comes to Jesus. And Jesus' temptations, you know what? They're all very, very relevant to him. And I'm sure they were very, very tempting. He's been in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He's fasted. And afterwards, the text says, he was famished. And then what's the first temptation? The tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Jesus could have done it. 
as he fed crowds of 5,000 and 4,000 later on, he could have done it. And the hard part about the temptation is there were plenty of reasons why he could have done it and why he should have done it. What does the devil say to him? If you are the son of God, he's sowing the seed of doubt. Um, and, and, you know, if Jesus wanted to prove himself as the son of God, he could have performed the miracle. There would have been lots of other justifications. Jesus could have taught, you know, if I have this bread, I'll be far better able to do the ministry I have to do. I might not get sick. I might whatever. But what does he say? Jesus answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus faced what every one of us faces when we are tempted and indeed when we have a decision to make. There's a scales, as it were, and on one side we can put all the justifiable reasons we can think of for choosing that temptation, but on the other side is what God says. Now, we might feel at times that this side of the scale is very heavy, but the reality is there is no excuse. If God has spoken something and God has made his will known, then that is what is to be obeyed. The alternative is sin. The alternative is to reject the will of God for ourselves. And so it happens with the other temptations. Three times the devil comes to Jesus and each time Jesus responds, it is written. He was a faithful Jew. He'd grown up knowing the scriptures. He knew what the word of God said. We're in a similar privileged situation. All of us have access to the scriptures. All of us can know and ought to know what God is speaking and calling us to. But that's the easy part. The easy part is to know it. The hard part for all of us is to actually put it into practice. And so at the beginning of this Lenten season, that is the question we need to reflect on. Who do we listen to? Because there are so many other voices and things that, that lead us in other directions. And in a sense, they come to us unbidden. You know, you turn on the radio and you're just getting it, getting it, getting it. It's much harder to listen to God. Because we have to actually make space to listen to God. We need to carve out time. And as I always say, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. But when it comes down to it, there does need to be some time, even if it's two minutes in a day, to make space to listen to God and to ask for his help to put it into practice. Now, as I said, that's the easy part. It's not hard in and of its, it's not easy in and of itself, but it is the easy part of this equation. Because the hard part is when the temptation comes, when the questions come, when the decisions have to be made. And like Jesus, we're there with the scales. And we can find endless reasons to ignore God's word. We can find endless excuses because that is what they are. We can say it's too hard. We can say, sure, everyone else is doing it. We can say, the world isn't like that now. We can say, I don't think that applies to me. We can say, I don't even sure do I believe it. But they're all excuses. Because if God has spoken something, then we have to obey. Because he is God and we are not. If you got a letter in the post, um, as I think I told this story probably last year, possibly this time of year, last year, where um, I came home one day uh, and there was a letter through um, the letterbox and it was a fine. Okay, it was a fine that I'd been parked and I didn't have the right tax disc on. And you know, it's terrible to admit in public, but I didn't. 
But the excuse was, and it's not an excuse because it's justified, the reason was, we just bought the car two days before and so the tax just hadn't come. But when that message came, did I ignore it? Did I say, sure, that doesn't apply to me. Sure, I'll put it in the drawer and forget about it. No, I didn't. I got on and I sorted what I needed to sort because the fine was going to be worse. If we do that with human authority, then why do we so often ignore and neglect and reject what it is that our creator God has given to us? Lent is the perfect time to think about these things. Um, you know, Jesus, in our, re- in our reading on Ash Wednesday, he speaks about fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. And he doesn't say, if you do it. He doesn't say, if you fast. He doesn't say, if you give alms. He doesn't say, if you pray. He says, whenever you pray, whenever you give alms, whenever you fast. The church has always taken that that is a command that we are expected to do by, by Christ. It is not, he doesn't specify how we're to fast, what we're to give up. He doesn't specify how much we are to give to the poor. He doesn't specify specifically how we are to pray. But the expectation is that we do it. And Lent, of course, is a perfect opportunity to say, Yes, Lord, this is what you say, and I ask for your help to obey it. And now to God the Father, God the Son, And God the Holy Spirit be all praise, dominion, glory and power forever and ever. Amen.